Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB and Apple has just released iOS 17.2. This is the second major update to iOS 17 and this update includes some pretty cool new features. So let's go ahead and jump in right now and I'll show you everything that's new. So first up is an all new application called Journal. Now, Apple was previewing this application way back in June, if you can believe it or not, and we finally have it available on the iPhone in December. So Apple is saying that journaling has links to mental health benefits, such as reducing stress and managing anxiety. And this application allows you to make journal entries with photos, videos, and even Apple music history, along with a bunch of other media as well. So this application is pretty simple. When you open it up, you're gonna see all of your existing journal entries. If you click the plus icon in the bottom, it's gonna give you a few recommendations. So here we have two tabs. We have recommended and recent. So you can see it's using some of my photos and some of my maps data to give me some inspiration to start writing. Also, if you scroll down, you can see that we have some of these reflection prompts. So this one says, what went well for you this week? If you tap on the refresh button, you can get a bunch of different reflection prompts right here. So this application is pretty cool. If I click on recent, you can see it's gonna go based on uh, days here. So the most recent albums I've listened to, the most recent photos I've taken, and some of the places I have visited. So here on my homepage, you can see I have one of my journal entries right here. By the way, if you haven't listened to this album, you absolutely should, it is amazing. But yeah, the journal app is pretty simple. You are able to just start writing if you want to. So you don't have to use any of these prompts. If you just tap on new entry, you can just start typing in basic text as you can see here. If you click on this icon, you can see you can pull up some of your uh, inspiration prompts right here. You can also add photos from your library. You can choose to take a photo right inside the application. You can click on your locations icon right here to add a current location or a previous location. And you can also click on this button right here and you can start recording right into the journal application. So all of your journal entries are going to be on the main page as you can see here. If you tap on the button on the top right, you have a few sorting options and some filters. And you can also choose to bookmark or delete a certain entry if you click on the three dot menu right there. But yeah, I think this application is going to be very popular for those of you who want to journal. Now you have an application built right into your iPhone to allow you to do this. Another feature in 17.2 is inside of Apple Music. So if we open up music and then go to playlists, you can see we have a new playlist called Favorite Songs. Now you're able to now favorite any song in your library and it's gonna go into this playlist. So if I go to my songs list and I'll click on the menu on one song, you can see that we now have a button that says favorite. So if I click on favorite for this song that I'm playing right here, there's actually a button right here on the now playing screen. I can favorite it right there. And then if I go into my playlist and then to favorites, you can see that song is now in there. Another really cool thing that you can turn on if you go into settings and then you want to scroll down and click on music, you can see you have the option to add favorite songs to your library. So if you are browsing Apple Music and then you decide to favorite a song, but you don't decide to add it to your library, you can choose to have it added automatically for you. This update also has a brand new feature for the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. Inside settings, if you click on action button, there is an all new option right here called translate. So you are now able to press and hold the action button and you can translate your language into any other language. This is going to be an amazing feature for those of you who like to travel a lot. So I'll show you how it works right now. Where is the nearest gas station? So I've been having this bug for a very long time. I think it's a little bit frustrating. You can tell I was speaking very clearly right there, but it only picked up one word. It's been doing this since it was in beta. I really hope that it doesn't keep doing this, but I'll try it one more time for you guys on video right now. Where is the nearest gas station? Okay, so there we go, it worked that time. And if you wanna play it, you can uh, choose to hit the play button and my volume is all the way down, but it will play out of the speakers on your iPhone. So as you can see there, that is why I don't edit these videos a lot because sometimes there are glitches in iOS. And even though this is a public release, just so you know, when I was testing this feature in beta, it does seem a little bit glitchy. So just keep that in mind as you're using the translate feature with the action button. 
And we also have another feature which is exclusive to the iPhone 15 Pro. This is going to be useful if you plan on picking up Apple's new AR headset, the Vision Pro. If you go into camera settings, click on formats, and you'll notice we have a new toggle at the bottom that says spatial video for Apple Vision Pro. If you turn this on and then you go into your camera, if you go over to video mode, you are now going to see a little icon in the bottom left hand corner, which looks like Apple Vision Pro. When you turn this on, it is going to be recording in 1080p 30 FPS. You don't get 4K in this mode, but it is going to be using the depth information from both of these cameras in conjunction with the LiDAR scanner to get you 3D video. So when you play this video back on your iPhone or on pretty much any other device, it's gonna look like normal video. However, there is going to be additional data saved in the files, which is going to allow it to look really cool and 3D when you're viewing it on Vision Pro. So obviously we can't test out this feature now, but if you plan on picking up Vision Pro in the future, it would definitely be a good idea to start recording all of your videos in spatial video. That way you can get the full experience when you view them on the headset in the future. And iOS 17.2 also brings a few changes inside of sound settings. So if we go in here, the first small change you'll notice is when you have silent mode turned on, the toggle is now red. So it just shows up a little bit more prominently so you can know that it is on. I'll turn it back off for now. And you can see if we go to the bottom, we now have a new option for default alerts. So before in iOS 17.1 and pretty much all iOS versions before 17.2, you could not change your default alert sound. The default sound before iOS 17, I believe was this one. And in iOS 17, they changed it to this one. But now in 17.2, you're able to choose any one of these sounds in this list as your default alert sound. And another feature in 17.2 is for iMessage. So you are now able to send one of your own stickers as a reaction to a message. So simply press and hold on the message that you wanna to react to, and you're gonna notice that we have a new button called Add Sticker. If you click on this, it's gonna pull up all of your stickers. So I'll just pick one here of me and my buddy. If I tap on that, it's gonna go ahead and send it. And you are now able to react in a much more personal way instead of the simple tap back options that we had before. Another change in this update is also inside of music, but for some reason I'm not able to see this feature on my iPhone. So maybe you guys can help me out in the comments. And it is being able to collaborate on playlists. So I guess essentially the idea is that you're able to choose a person in your contacts and they will be able to add songs to that playlist that you guys would both share. But for some whatever reason, I don't know why I'm not seeing the collaborate option on my iPhone. I have an article pulled up here. Apparently this is what it's supposed to look like. There's supposed to be a little people icon in the top right corner and then you're supposed to be able to click on the collaborate button. But for some whatever reason, it is not showing up on my iPhone. But this is supposed to be present present in iOS 17.2. The next feature in 17.2 lives under your profile inside of settings. So click on your name and then scroll all the way down and then click on contact key verification. So Apple is saying you can verify who you are messaging by comparing a contact verification code in person or over the phone. So I guess the idea here is that your account could in theory get hacked and you don't know that you're actually messaging that person. So this essentially adds the option to have two-factor authentication inside an iMessage conversation. So I can't see myself using this. It seems like a lot of work just to verify who I'm texting and I have complete trust that I'm texting the right person. But I guess if you're paranoid or if you work in a field where security is a big issue for you, I would recommend turning this on. But it's nice that it is an option here in 17.2. And another change is inside of iCloud settings. If you click on show all and then click on messages in iCloud, you're gonna see this menu has been redesigned. So it shows you a little bit more data here. So for the first time, it actually shows you how many messages you have saved in iCloud. And then we also have a new button right here called sync now. So this has never been here in iOS before. It's really nice that we finally have a sync button for iMessage. This is especially useful for people like me that have multiple iPhones. iOS 17.2 also has a pretty small change for contact posters. So inside a contact, if you click on contact poster and photos, click on customize and then choose poster. 
So you're now able to choose a rainbow text option for that contact's name. So a pretty small change, but the only options we had before were solid colors such as this white, blue, purple, and pink such as these. And now we can actually choose a rainbow color just like this. And then finally, the last few changes in 17.2, you've probably been able to see them throughout the entire video, is we have a bunch of new widgets now in this update. So the first one, as you can see here, is we have a new widget for the clock application. So this is an all digital clock. I think this looks really nice. Myself, I prefer the look of the analog clock, but it is nice that we now have this one right here. We also have a few different options for weather as well. So this one is called details. So it's gonna give us the chance of precipitation, the wind speed, the air quality index, and also the wind chill. And then we also have another weather widget showing the daily forecast going up to the four days in the future. And then finally, we have a sunrise and sunset widget that shows the curve of the sun in the sky. As you can see here in Northern Canada, the sun isn't getting very high in the sky right now. So that is everything new in iOS 17.2. I want you guys to head down into the comments right now and tell me what your favorite new feature is. For me, I honestly don't think I'm gonna use the journal app that much. So I think my favorite feature is now being able to favorite songs in Apple Music. And honestly, I'm also a pretty big fan of these new weather widgets. I can definitely see myself using these on a daily basis. But like I said, let me know in the comments your guys' thoughts. If you guys found this video informative or helpful, please drop a like below as it does really help us out quite a bit. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Stay tuned for more content and I'll see you in the next video.